Are you aware of what your immunity exactly is and what this means for you, for your body and for your mind? Have you ever explored the possibilities of your immune system and why some people are better or less immune than others? Would you like to feel completely and robustly protected by your immune system? Probably yes. And say yes if you would like. This is your opportunity to find out immediately what it means to be immunized in a way that you had never thought before and direct impacts on what you can do to be perfectly immunized on a daily basis, to be healthy, to be peaceful regardless of the news. You will hear about three specific boosts that are now offered to you to boost your immunity like you had never thought before. The following is a presentation of the Alenian Chronicle. Please find autopics at www.alenian.com. Let's go to boost your immunity like you had never thought before. First of all, what is immunity? There is a big surprise there to me when I look into the definition, at least in the French definition. The first meaning that is put forth is the, the diplomatic immunity, a kind of a right to benefit from a derogation from the common law to get a privilege. And then only the second meaning in various sources is the defense mechanisms of an organism against elements that are foreign to itself, in particular like infectious agents, viruses, bacteria, etc. So I'm amazed and in, in a kind of negative way <laughs> that we could put the diplomatic immunity first, even before talking about our natural inner uh, physical immunity as individuals and also as a collective humanity. Well, beyond that surprise, the interesting point is that your physical body, according to the definition of immunity, has a set of defense mechanisms against foreign elements to himself. This is called your immunity or your immune system. There is that particular defense mechanism. This is absolutely crucial to understand because that's the first thing. And on the other hand, did you know that in the world, everything is information and wavelength? I know that may sound surprising at first, but let's dig into it just a little. When you think you see something, for instance, you may think, without really thinking about it, by the way, that you are really seeing something. You are seeing colors or uh, uh, shapes uh, and, and all, all of these things. But are, are you really thinking that the shape is like traveling towards your eye and going through whatever helps you to see? so that you can see that shape or that particular color? Of course not. This is not the object that you see. You actually see the corresponding vibration of the different elements of that particular object. There is the shape, the color, the depth, the, the position, and everything about what you see is actually just a collection of pieces of data, of pieces of information. This is only information and waves of information. That is, um, those waves are received by your eye and transformed into electrical signals transmitted to the brain and there these these pieces of information may be interpreted as shapes, colors, uh, uh, um, uh, distances, and whatever you may see, okay? But in the end, this is not an object. This is a collection of bits of information, and that's the important part. 
You will find, by the way, all the details and the links to the, the particular definitions of the vision and all the other things that I will talk about in the PDF version of that particular subject. Now, when you think you hear something, for instance, my voice as an example, you could think that uh, there is my voice like traveling from me to you, but this is actually not what happens. What happens is that there is a wave of information, a, a signal, uh, a vibrational wave that is uh, uh, projected by my system generating my voice and that particular wave is received by your ear that then can transform, uh, translate that wave into a signal that will be transmitted and interpreted as my voice. Okay? And we can go on and on like this. For example, when you think you have pain, if you, if you knock your, your arm, uh, for instance, and you feel the pain, do you think there is uh, something in your arm that is kind of a, a block, like an object that we could call pain? And here again, not at all. This is just a signal that is transmitted from your arm to uh, your brain and giving the information that something is going on needing attention to take care of it and maybe repair uh, everything in, in your arm if there is any damage. So again, if you think you feel something like anger or frustration or uh, peace and tranquility or even love or happiness, these feelings are not objects into yourself. They are vibrations. They are correspondence of, of waves and wavelength uh, corresponding to those particular feelings. These waves and vibrations are transformed and translated and interpreted by your system as those feelings that you think you feel. Okay, another example is when you think something, the, the words or the ideas of what you think are not like objects in your mind. These are just vibrations and, and waves again that are interpreted by your brain uh, as thoughts and uh, translated into words if you are talking to yourself in your mind, for example you interpret those pieces of information. And then there is the Pygmalion effect, which is very important, which is that uh, uh, when you are surrounding by encouraging words and uh, energies and supporting people or uh, attention and intentions around you, you are in better position to succeed or to uh, perform very well in whatever you are currently doing and the reverse effect also exists so that's all about vibration and then when you wag your fingers on your keyboard for example do you think that your brain is saying well go on the left on the right and up and down or that that key that key actually no these are just bits of information again uh, uh, characterizing the, the left movement or the right movement and all of these bits of information are transmitted and interpreted uh, to uh, transmit the information to your fingers so they translate the information into movements. Okay. And then we can go on and on even when you understand something, when you have a cognition this is not about a new object popping into your mind. This is about connections, electrical connections in your brain, connecting different pieces of information like you had never thought before. And suddenly, wow, you see things in a totally new way. And that's again the vibration of your whole being that has been transformed by that new uh, uh, connection which transformed the, the vibrational hold, the vibrational result of who you are. 
So what about your immune system in regards to this information you may be wondering now? Well, we now know that first, the immune system is a set of defense mechanisms against elements that are foreign to your body. And secondly, absolutely everything in the world is actually either information or waves or just both, actually. In other words, when you consider those two elements together, this is like saying that in order to help your body or your health protect itself from foreign elements th such as viruses or stress, which is to boost your immune system and reinforce your protection system, you must in fact protect yourself from information and corresponding waves and vibrations that are harmful to you. And we will see concrete examples of what this means and three specific boosts to help you boost your immunity considering that particular perspective on those uh, pieces of information. Now, you probably know the principle of the antivirus, okay? On your computer, I mean, there is that common uh, uh, principle now of an antivirus. And then, what do you expect concretely from your antivirus? You expect from it that it will protect your system, your computer, from external uh, attacks or elements that could be disrupting or uh, harmful to your system. You want your antivirus to protect your system, to keep it safe and uh, to remove those viruses or to fix them and to eliminate them uh, uh, and do everything that is necessary to keep your system safe. And concretely, you also want your antivirus to do it on its own, okay? You don't want to be uh, uh, monitoring your antivirus on a day-to-day -day basis to check, well, you should do this, you th should do that. No, you just want your antivirus to work properly uh, on its own and to keep your system safe. That is exactly what you expect or what you are supposed to expect from your immunity and from your immune system, okay? You want your immune system to uh, protect your body from external elements that could be disrupting or harmful or having a negative impact on yourself, on your body, on your whole functioning, okay? Now, you want your immune system to work on its own, exactly like your antivirus. But then you need to be aware that your antivirus to work properly, it needs something from you. It needs to know the definitions of what is a virus or not. Exactly like your immune system. Your immune system needs the definition to know what is a virus or not. This is where your behaviors show you where you are in terms of your immunity and how you can self-correct. And we'll see very important information to help you uh, improve on your immune behaviors. Now, at Alineon, we are doing a lot of research and development in human capacities. But we do not do it in a physiological, biological, internal, microscopical way at all or requiring any external device or measurement things, etc. Because a major goal of our research is to help people be completely autonomous and self-empowered not needing any external device or any external medication or any external element of any kind, okay? The idea is about self-autonomy and really be uh, empowered to live, to be alive and to be well, okay? And so the way we work is from an informatics or even informational point of view. Uh, using the vibrational correspondences of things and behaviors. 
everything which is uh, apparent or um, uh, uh, seeable and hearable without any device, without any particular uh, external thing, just as, as you are, okay? Because you say everything about yourself just by being yourself. And that's where the magic begins. So you will understand. For example, how is your immune system doing? You may be wondering. And then you may look at your behaviors, basically. Because if, for instance, you are uh, used to say yes to everything, including all of these things that are not good for you, that are harmful to you, that you do not feel good with, uh, such as a project or a night out with friends, but you don't feel good about it, or uh, getting involved in a particular job, where, whereas you, you just feel terrible about doing it, or living in a particular place and so on. If you keep saying yes to those things that are harmful to you, ignoring your inner check that says that it's not okay for you, then it means that your immune behaviors are not really protecting you. They are keeping open some uh, uh, faults uh, where everything that is not okay for you can enter actually. In that case, this is probably the same for your immune system because there is a direct correspondence, correspondence between your behaviors and your state of being. But this is actually very good news because then you have a lot of information to work with. You can observe your behaviors to self-correct. And this is a training indeed. This is not just like, oh, okay, I would like to change. Well, if, if you were able to do it, you would have done it a long time ago. Change is about training yourself to change and working on yourself and opening your mind to change, opening yourself to, to new ways of thinking, to new ways of behaving, to new ways, ways of uh, uh, trusting yourself and start to live in confidence instead of just behaving out of fear. So the good news is that in order to improve your immune system, you actually have to harmonize with immune behaviors and everything about immunity, which vibrates in, in correspondence to a, a strong immune system. And that's something you can do very easily uh, without any external side effects. Uh, you just have to work on that and invest yourself on that particular uh, topic. So it may require some effort from you, but it is definitely worth it to get the results. So it's up to you. And I recommend if you have not yet considered the first part of this particular series, which is about the principle of harmony to maximize your energy, I do recommend that you uh, watch or read through it because this will help you understand better how to harmonize uh, and what's the big um, uh, necessity of this harmony vibration with what you truly want and what is good for you. Now, in troubled times of upset media, we are going through a particular uh, period of time like never before. There is so much information. There is everything all around. Everyone telling their own opinion about things and everybody trying to identify where is the truth or not and what to listen to or, or believe or not and so on. And that's particularly interesting because a major call in all this is for each of us to get back within to find the truth. The only truth that is true for you is the one that vibrates in harmony with who you are. And that's where a particular element may be true for someone and not for another one, because they are not the same persons, they don't need the same vibrations. And so in order to feel good, they don't have the same needs. And that's very important to respect. 
in order to help each other live better. Now, you see, I had a major cognition about immunity recently, um, looking at, at this particular period of time. When I heard uh, about censorship and some videos or posts or articles that were uh, censored and, and knocked down to remove information that was uh, apparently not okay for those who have the power to do it. And I was wondering about this and then Eureka, I realized that for that particular system that they are, if you consider the system of all those people uh, uh, having so much power and money, having built a whole network and uh, um, structure around pharmaceutical uh, principle and patents and those big companies all working together to make money to ensure that they keep people sick and completely dependent on pills or drugs and uh, um, vaccines etc if you look at it from their point of view uh, their system has in a way a very good immunity if they have the set of mechanisms to ensure that anything like a video that would start to be against them and um, explaining the lies that they are uh, telling every, everybody about, uh, then their immune system is kind of working very well if it shuts down those videos telling the truth about them. So if they have a good immune system, that's probably, well, good for them. But then it also means that if they do have a good immune system, you can do it too. And you have the choice and the possibility to work on reinforcing your immune system in front of their information. If their information is not good to you, you, you are not compelled to uh, listen to them. You don't have to, okay? If you feel good with what they tell you, well, then just go on, okay? That's your choice. You know what is good for you. But if you do not feel good with what they tell you to do or not do and, and, and wear masks or fear your neighbor and so on, if you don't feel good with all of this, you have the responsibility to work on your own immune system to protect yourself from their sayings. And that's part of your definitions of what a virus is for your system. If their, their uh, propaganda is a virus for you, you have to update your definitions to ensure that your system does not receive any of their propaganda anymore. And you see, if you have been any step ahead in your own self-development journey, you are more than aware that everybody, including you, has now to get out of the victim mode. We can't move on as victims. We are not victims. We have to take back our own responsibility to take care of ourselves and to be clear about what is good for us or not on an individual point of view and also then on a collective point of view and that's also part of what is going on now when we talk about a virus are you afraid of a virus are you seriously afraid of that little thing that you never saw that you have never seen before you may have seen some pictures not even sure that they were the right pictures because most of the time when you see an article for example that attracts your attention they did that thanks to a shocking picture that could attract your attention that shocking picture quite often has nothing to see with the reality but this was a, a catching picture 
which worked if you actually uh, then read, read the article or watched the movie or the, the video. So if you are afraid of that little thing like a virus, you should immediately consider the three boosters that I will present to you now. Boost number one. This is the imaginary boost for a cellular good. Concretely, if you are afraid of a virus or a bacteria or anything like that, you probably imagine it a bit like this. But in that case, this is where you are wrong. You are deceiving yourself, you are lying to yourself and you are misleading yourself. Because if that's your case, first you are imagining the virus much bigger and much more powerful than you. Second, you imagine it awful or scary as if it could harm you. Third, you imagine that your body is not able or not designed to stay healthy. In the face of life, come on, without messing around, it is life itself that allows your body to be alive, isn't it? And fourth, you imagine that the virus can enter you and harm you which implies that you imagine, you imagine your own immune system as being incapable. In that case, unfortunately, this is probably what you also think of yourself. Now, fortified with this discovery, the imaginary boost operation consists in modifying the way you imagine that thing which in that case is the virus, but it also works with anything else that you may be uh, afraid of in your life, okay? Start, for instance, by imagining it with a nicer look. You may imagine it like looking good, frankly, like very, very friendly, okay? That completely changes the picture in your mind, and that's the point. Because when you change the picture in your mind, it changes the vibration in your mind, which changes the vibration in which your whole body is bathed, which changes the, the way your uh, cells with behave and your whole uh, uh, state of being will evolve. Because when you think of something very friendly, very uh, nice looking uh, uh, and very good to you, feeling good to you, then you feel better, okay? You have a spring in your heart and that's good to you. Then you can imagine or actually remember that tiny little little thing is so so small that you can't even see it. You are so much bigger, much 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 bigger than it. If you change that in your perception, it changes a lot of things again in your whole system. And remember, your immune system is part of your system. So you have to be very careful of what you put into your own system and what you consider as your definition of viruses. Then you can also imagine the virus which has no idea of who you are or what you are. You are that big crazy thing looking at it, watching it, uh, taking pictures and trying to modify it and to get in, in interaction with it and so on. But come on, the virus has nothing to do with you. You are none of its business initially. The virus eventually is just looking for a fault. Do you have faults? That's the point you have to take care of your system. You can also imagine the virus as being cool because he's getting like uh, uh, the attention of all the paparazzi and uh, the television uh, having its own um, news reports, etc. which is kind of what a lot of human beings are looking for as the best thing that could ever happen to them. And you will find, by the way, lots of details to uh, inspire your imagination about uh, these things. And you can also imagine the virus as an angelic style, uh, because it's also, in some way, the very best thing that can happen to you to uh, 
update your system, to update your definitions and to improve your self-protection behaviors. That's also very, very important. And the imaginary boost is absolutely essential because it's a habit to develop that will benefit uh, you in so many ways when you master your imagination and when you put things in your imagination that feels that feel good to you you contribute to your vibrational field of your whole being this bathes your whole body and every cell of your body in something that feels good that is more beneficial to you that is more welcoming and constructive and kind and sweet and encouraging etc and this has been proven as well you may look for the book the biology of belief from the dr bruce lipton in which he explains a lot of very fascinating things about the cells and how the body behaves when uh, bathed into um, a very positive and nurturing environment. Your imagination is a major source of information for your vibrational field. So you can't ignore that anymore. If you don't want to be a victim, just stop feeling like a victim or taking your, yourself for, for it and retake your responsibility of your own imagination. Concretely, when you feel good, when you imagine something, it means that it's good for you and beneficial. And when you imagine something and feel bad, then it means that this thing is bad for you. That's just simple. And I hope that's clear to you because you don't need any medicine or doctor to know how you feel you, you, when you imagine something. You just know how you feel and you need you for that. You need you and your attention to yourself in that particular moment when you imagine something. That's self-awareness, self-attention, self-care and self-protection which is at stake for you here. Boost number two. This is the immune boost for a community good. Personally, on uh, social networks, I have observed that I do not feel good when I see posts about wearing masks out of very specific contexts that are appropriate for that. Uh, but in, in today's daily uh, life wearing masks or inciting to wear masks to me from my perspective and experience it's just contributing to the lies about the health and uh, uh, how to stay healthy and take care of our own body balance and so this is part of my system okay and you have to take care of your definitions and your system now, in my system, this is just not okay for me because I've spent years retraining myself to not need any of those protection uh, specificities like wearing masks or being careful not to touch anything or not to approach someone, etc. I've been suffering from this for years and uh, I worked so hard to get away from those uh, extra uh, protection or stresses around these details uh, in the daily life that I, I don't want to go back to that because it was making me die instead of uh, helping life to flourish within me. So I am not okay with those uh, particular posts or information. And now feel very respected. If you feel good wearing a mask, just do it. That's part of your job to protect yourself. And that's precisely the point. So personally, I want a good antivirus. I want a good immunity. So I want to immunize myself against these elements that are harmful to me and uh, that disturb my system and uh, that are not okay uh, for my own uh, inner state. And instead of letting them pass or just uh, doing with them, 
uh, I have to uh, take charge, take responsibility for that. And actually, the system itself is very well well made because uh, you have the the option. You can click on the top right corner. There are three dots where you can click and report the content as unde the undesirable content. Okay, like spam. And so remember, everything is information and vibration. So focusing my attention on protecting myself on that protection process by filtering out those contents that are not okay for me, that, that feel bad to me, I am training myself to immunize myself and I'm reharmonizing myself or reinforcing my uh, system in terms of immunity uh, behaviors, which is very, very important. So, you may think, well, sometimes, you know, you have to uh, uh, um, ensure that you get the information, uh, not to, uh, to, to ignore it and so on. But then that's your choice. If you feel good with it, just go for it. But if you feel bad with it, it means it's harmful to you. It has a negative impact on you. It, 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 it just um, puts yourself down and so it may contribute to shut down your immune system as well. So that's your choice. You have to take care of assessing what is good to you and what is not. And the basic check is how you feel when in front of that information. It's really up to you to update your virus definitions, to determine them and to update them along the way, to give them to your antivirus. You remember, we talked about the antivirus principle, which is exactly the point here. So you will find more detail of that little protocol in three specific steps for the immune boost that you can apply to anything in your life, to train yourself, to uh, reinforce your immune behaviors. Step one, the personal finding, which is very, very key uh, to start with. And then step two, there is the decision that corresponds to your personal finding, which has to be strong and clear and, and concrete. And then the step three, uh, where you take act of this decision, to embody your decision and to make it so concrete that it transmits the information directly to your brain and to your whole system with the vibrational correspondence reinforcing your immune system and your self-protection mechanisms and behaviors. And then we often need a second example to better understand. And another one which is so absolutely vital to understand is about groups that you may be part of. There are so many applications now where you can be part of such or such groups and uh, receive all those messages from all those people that are also part of those groups. And here again, this is a Eureka because sometimes you may think, well, I don't have time for that anymore. I stop looking at the messages, but you keep uh, your subscription to the group. And so from time to time, you see a message without uh, uh, looking for it, or it just uh, clutters up your uh, phone memory with all those photos or videos from others. Or also you receive notifications, even silently, which are just disturbing your system, because if they weren't there, uh, this is a whole part of your resources that would be available for something else. This is just extra noise. And then you may think, well, uh, sometimes I, I don't have time to look for those messages, but I wouldn't like to miss any particular information that could be useful to me. But then the translation of that behavior into an immune perspective is that you don't want that negative influence anymore, but you still want to keep a door open. That's a fault. 
that's a flow in your system in which the the, the external thing may uh, uh, engulf itself and, and enter your system. That's concretely the principle of a fault in your system. That's where you may get hacked. And so you probably don't want that, okay? And so you have to uh, become aware of your own contradiction because this is vital to self-update yourself, not only in terms of your behaviors, but also in terms of your immunity because uh, becoming aware of that and having that eureka cognition, this haha moment in which you, wow, you, you, you get back into awareness of your own contradiction, this instantly removes a block for your immune system to behave more properly. That's so interesting to know about and to use on a daily basis or to benefit from because you don't really have anything to do there. Uh, you just have to uh, get out of the way of your immune system to let it work properly. That's it. Boost number three. This is the temperature boost for the common good. That's so interesting to consider that third boost because we, we may have that tendency of uh, being afraid of temperature or uh, uh, reactions of the body that may look abnormal, but th they are actually part of the, the whole system that ensures your whole body or your whole being to stay into balance on a long-term uh, basis. And so the basic immune principle of temperature is uh, uh, to allow the body by increasing the temperature to suppress any microbes or viruses that have taken up too much space uh, in the body, in the system, okay? So first, the body temperature increases. Second, the microbes are too hot and they just capitulate. And third, the body regains its balance. That's a quite simple protocol which work very well. So sometimes it can be long uh, and uh, sometimes we are um, kind in some certain patterns or specific cases in which the body won't be able to recover by itself. But then this, this has to be considered like it is, which is that it, you have been through too much if you can't um, get back into balance spontaneously, it means you have had too much. It was just like a burnout. And so burning out is, is an interesting word that has been chosen corresponding to that temperature. You, you just got burned out with too, too much, you know, it was too hot for you. Too much stress or too much difficulty, too much... Uh, uh, fear or pain or whatever but this is not again something you have to consider as a victim mode and I'm not saying this is uh, uh, easy to go through or uh, that we shouldn't uh, care uh, for uh, difficulties that we may have I've had so much myself as well I am the first one to truly understand how tough this may be However, what I'm saying is that the more we get back our own responsibility, the more we get back our own power to change things and to improve and get better and feel good and get back into balance without being dependent on external things. And even if it may seem like unrealistic, well, we've, we've seen so many extraordinary things around the world. There are so many people having done everything that could seem impossible at first, but then if one human being has done it, then it means any human being could be able to do it too. So that's, that's a human ability, a human possibility, and there is so much more that we are not yet aware of or not completely open to understanding or to accepting or believing in. 
that we, we, we just have to keep going and keep opening ourselves to these possibilities. Now back to the temperature. I know we may think about um, older people uh, or uh, those who may be uh, more vulnerable and so on. But the, the point is that we should not care about them in terms of uh, protecting them or uh, um, adding patches onto the problem. We should care for them in a more uh, truthful way, which is to enhance and reinforce their own inner ability to be alive and to live well and to be healthy through their immune system. And I've put a particular example that is dear to me about uh, older people that I've lived myself. In the PDF version, I explain how, how we, we should consider them, all of them that could be uh, thought about as vulnerable. We should think about them as much stronger than that. Because through the Pygmalion effect that I talked about earlier, this would encourage them, their body and all their cells and all their, their whole being, uh, it would encourage their whole being to be better, to perform better, to be stronger, to be healthier, to be more able of everything, even being healthy and, and steady and strong and, and consistent. And that's something we could do for them that would probably do much more good than uh, caring in terms of medication or vaccines or keeping them feel powerless. Because power powerlessness is a threat in itself uh, for the, the immune system. So the temperature of the news is something interesting. We could say or think that, wow, things are getting hot out there, okay? There are so many things uh, coming out, so many truths started to be uh, told and so many lies uh, being revealed as being lies uh, and so on. Things are getting quite, quite hot and tense, okay? And when you consider the temperature as something very positive and natural, a natural way to stay healthy, to uh, uh, boost the, the body and even to elevate consciousness in some cultures, there are specific uh, uh, temperature elevation protocols to elevate the consciousness and boost the body and the immune system. So when you consider that, you may think as um, you might think about the temperature out there as the collective temperature of humanity and the whole humanity having a kind of fever to get rid of the microbes of the past and to get rid of those harmful negative uh, um, elements that are not beneficial uh, to humanity anymore or not at all, and that we do not want uh, anymore. So this temperature has to increase. So instead of fearing it or being against it, we can embrace it. Where they ask us to uh, stop embracing each other, let's embrace that rise of temperature where humanity is getting back into balance, regaining its health and feeling good so we can re-emerge from this as a new humanity, feeling better, feeling stronger, healthier, uh, getting uh, along um, uh, even better uh, together as a collective uh, humanity. That's something amazing. So do you listen to these things that make you feel bad? Or will you listen to these things that make you feel good and then update your antivirus definitions to boost your system? That's actually a choice. That's your choice and I recommend you to do it well. I will just conclude with a little anecdote that amused me recently when I was saying to Jean-Luc that 
he could uh, choose in the energy saving options of his phone to shut down an application when it's not used or, or not that often. And Jean-Luc straight away answered me back saying, well, if the application itself is not configurable in a way that does not pump out the energy or time, then I just get rid of it. This was kind of uh, radical to me, but actually he's very right. And that's completely consistent with his immune system that is absolutely incredible, very strong, very powerful. And I've learned so much uh, from him on that kind of topic that I, I really got that conclusion out of that particular example, because you have to be strict. If something is not good to you, then it's not good to you. You should not try to find alternates ways or alternatives to 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 counteract the negative effect then if something is negatively impacting you just get rid of it that's probably the simplest way and the best way to take care of your immune system so enjoy it or not that's really up to you choose what you want do it the way you want it and uh, the way that makes you feel good because that will be for the best benefit to your immune system. And see you next time for the fourth part of this particular series to talk about a technique of energetic memory reharmonization to get back the energy that you could have lost or uh, led behind in specific situations or memories that doesn't feel good to you. See you next time. This has been a presentation of the Alenian Chronicle. Please find more information at www.alenian.com.